Hey, this is Ken Casey from the Dropkick Murphys, and I love the Grandstanders! <laughs> Take it away, kid! <laughs> Live here on Big TV. My name is Scott Kerman, and I'm joined by my usual cohorts, Uncle Joe McLaughlin. He's the professor, Ross Stevens, and he's JP's number one son, Tim Hoey. Well, we have another great show for you tonight. So, boys, let's get it started. All right, so when the Celtics lost those two horrible games against the Clippers Ooh. and the Lakers, um, I went to my happy place, and that's <laughs> mic'd up. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah, Patriots. yeah. just keep right. watching all the NFL films to <laughs> right. the Super Bowl win, right? Yeah, yeah. right. It's whenever you're sad, right, Timmy? For, and then, just you know keep what watching the Patriots. If, if that particular game is on, there's a different Super Bowl victory yeah. on. And yeah. We get to oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. A quick story. Yeah. I ended up at, I, I had to get in the car service, and I walked into a, a, a bar, I had a beer while I was getting service, and I walk in, and the Atlanta Super Bowl's on, and I start live texting my friends as if I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> oh, that's that's classic. Right? Like, yeah, you know, right. uh, Chris Hogan, we're st we keep throwing bombs down the left sideline of Chris Hogan. Like, this guy should never play another down. And, I've know, done the math. I think we could win this. You know what I do? I then go to YouTube, uh, Seattle fans' reactions, uh, yeah. you know, uh, an Atlanta fan reaction. Oh, it's great. And uh, how. Oh, they, why do they, I, yeah, why, they why have them watching TV? Yeah, right? why, yeah why do I take joy from there? Shadden yeah, yeah, right. yeah. 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 that's what we do in sports. Schadenfreude. Yeah. But what I realized, fellas, is that now when you know those losses, mm. when the Celtics lost, I have no patience for Boston sports team <laughs> losses anymore, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Forgetting about mediocrity. It's unacceptable. Right, forgetting <laughs> about even being the upper middle class, you've got to be living in rarefied <laughs> air for us, yeah. or we have no interest. Is that... Moving forward, the way we're going to look at sports in Boston, there, there's been a certain level of expectations put down, you know, by the Celtics, uh, by by the Patriots and the Red Sox. We accept nothing less now. So, Russ, we've raised the bar to such a level yeah. that we're going to have no. Patience, yeah, what's right? what's very interesting, I think, you know, success breeds success, and all I remember in the last year or two, I've heard all of the other teams' owners and coaches reference the pressure in Boston to win given the environment. Oh yeah, Cassidy yeah. and uh, Stevens have both mentioned it. And I, I do think the owners talk, I think, I think the, uh, the coaches <clears throat> talk, the general managers talk, and they're all, you know, exchanging ideas for that magic formula to bring a championship yeah, team. Yeah, Brad Stevens said that since he's moved here, his children have seen uh, three Super Bowls and two yeah. World Series. <laughs> uh, Joe, I was thinking of you the other day. So the New York Times has been doing this thing, kind of keeping a running tab of the best two-decade runs uh, in any uh, city of all their sports teams. Yeah. And with this Super Bowl... We moved into the first spot. The best two-decade run in, in the history of American sports is now Boston. We, we are now beat the 50, essentially the 50s, 60s New York teams. Okay. Yankees. 17%. We've won 17% right of last available championships yeah. in a 20 yeah. Available yeah. championships. You know what I feel so Those Yankee that? teams were, were just dominating. All that. these right. years, I've had Red Sox season tickets. I've had Celtic season tickets. I've had Bruins season tickets and Patriots season tickets. You've lived the life. So... I have just hit the sweet spot. Yeah, you're the good luck charm. I so I ask yeah, boys, yeah. why are Bill and Tom continuing? What's going to motivate them, do you think, moving on to the 2019 season? Well, he wants to put nine rings on that boat. But you really think that's it? I honestly think, I agree with Joe, I honestly think they're addicted to winning. I just think they're addicted to winning, and, and now it's legacy, and every time they win, they drive the nail deeper into the ground, and, and they move the posts further and further down the field for anyone else to And In every them. game, it seems they one or the other sets an individual record, and they, you know, 
geez, now I'm ahead of everyone except Don Shula and George Hallis. You know, and they're enjoying and, the ride. You know, too. he's past Landry, and with yeah. with Brady, I mean, he's not going to get like the completions record or the yardage record, but he's going to get the wins. He's got the wins record, and he's going to mm-hmm. continue to pad that so that no one may might be ever able to touch yeah. it. Well, I started this a couple of years ago, and now it, it's it's going to start just hitting the nation. <clears throat> if you're giselling it, <laughs> that's what we're calling it now. What does that mean? Giselling it means that yeah. you are trying to avoid injury while playing a no professional sneak. No quarterback sneak. <laughs> oh, no wow. quarterback sneak. So that's loud. giselling wow. it yeah. from now on. That's I mean, that's going to carry on to all sports, right? Yeah. So that would be kind of like Gronk. Let's Giselle Gronk next year. Let's save him for the uh, that's right. the 12th game. Right. Hey. So he'll like Stephen it. Stephen Wright would be Giselling it his whole career. Yeah, yeah very well. <laughs> hey, just back to that, though. There was something in the aftermath of the, the Patriots win in Kansas City that made me think of something that you just asked, which was, it, and it was a candid moment because there were just a couple of cameras in there, but yeah. the New England Patriots.com uh, televised it or tweeted it live where Edelman goes up to Brady and says, we got to get you seven so that you can get ahead of Jordan. And he says it to him like three yeah. times, yeah. shouting it at yeah. him, like you need seven so, so you that's can pass something MJ. Talked about. You know, 100%. The, the, the great ones set their own bar. Uh, Steve Jobs <clears throat> with Apple. You know, the, these guys, they, right. they set their own you know, it's like the but great, who would have thunk Timmy that the, they, he would have ever thought Michael Jordan? You know, the, the greatest salesman in the world doesn't, you know, break the record and say, "Okay, now I'm done." He wants to set a, 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 a record that's like unbeatable. You know, like Wayne Gretzky with goals, like well, un- unattainable. How many times has Tom Brady told the story? They ask him. He tells every time they say what championship meant the most to you. He always says the next one. Yeah. Tells the story of the equipment manager at Michigan mm-hmm. and saying. What's the best championship? The next one. Yeah. Well, we're enjoying it, boys, and uh, we'll keep talking about this mm-hmm. till mm-hmm. September. The Patriots, but we go to the Boston Celtics. Did you guys watch the game last night against the Sixers? Well, a little better game than the previous two. All of a sudden, I would. Would you agree that that was the best away game they've played all season? I agree. I, I hadn't thought of that. That they, was their best. I think they were one and eleven on the road without Kyrie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so that <laughs> thing had loss written all over it last night, and they pulled it out. And there were times during the game they got down by eight, nine no. points where you thought, okay, th- this is just going to, they're going to They're going to give up. They're going to give up. No. They're going to fold it up. But they kept on playing hard. And a guy like Al Horford, who regular season Al has not been the same as playoff Al, again, for the last few weeks since he's been healthy, he's been one of the best players on the court. He sure has. It's made a huge difference. I'll tell you, Al gets the ball down low. He's pretty unstoppable. He, he, the guy gives up. He made the block against... Uh, the, the, the uh, Lakers. The Lakers, and then uh, unfortunate series of events yeah. happened. Mm-hmm. The ball ended up in Rondo's <coughs> hand. That was Gordon Haywood's Al comes to play. T- Tim, you've been to more <laughs> games you know, than all of us combined. What do you see when you actually watch the whole team on the court? What's your takeaway from being at those games? I, I, I love Marcus Smart's leadership. I just wish he wouldn't shoot the ball more than three times a game. No, yeah. he uh, that, like, you, know, you see him heave it up. And I love Marcus Smart, but he just shouldn't shoot. I see Jalen Brown coming around. I mean, what I've seen from Haywood this year, he doesn't even belong on the court. I know he had a good game last night. I didn't see the game last night, but I heard he had a good game. Um, they look like they should be blowing people out. Mm. Like those, the, the, the Lakers game and the Clippers well, game. They had like 18 plus. They, 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 28 they, points against the This is Clippers. what happens. Let me, this is what I see happens. The Celtics go into this three-point shooting salvo. Mm-hmm. Against the Lakers, they must have missed... 23 <laughs> right. pointers in a row. Yeah. And the Lakers hit an incredible hot streak, and they must have hit, it seemed like, 23 print, three pointers in a row. And uh, it, I think the coach needs to call timeouts in the middle of these things and say, hey, let's settle for two for a few series. That Let's get our mojo yeah. back and, and break this little. Yeah. It, these losses, we go into these droughts. Well, the two losses to L.A. is going to end up haunting us. I know we thought the Miami Dolphins no. lost. <laughs> yeah. I know, but right? Yeah, we, yeah. We, so now we I question it. But enough. we need to be in the third seed. We need to get to the third seed. So we're playing the Brooklyn Nets in the first round of the playoffs as opposed to the Sixers. Because whoever comes out of a Sixers-Celtics series is in trouble. They're going to be damaged forward. goods by Absolutely. the time they finish. Yeah. So, look, yeah. we thought with Oladipo's injury that the Pacers would be done. Yeah. You know, they may not even make the playoffs. Well, boys, they've won six straight. Yeah. So these losses, 
could be deadly when it comes to the final. But it could be, I, you know, I haven't looked so. at the six teams, but it could be like, remember that seven-game winning streak the Celtics had against the limp, lame, and lazy there, and everyone was touting them, and then they immediately lost three in a But we lost the yeah. two bad teams in the Clippers Yeah, and look, yeah. you know, I think that uh, a lot of people are hoping that somehow this team's going to get hot and, and, you know, plow through the end of the season and through the playoffs. Here's the problem with the NBA, unlike the NFL and unlike baseball, is Teams rarely, the hot team rarely gets hot enough in the NBA to win a championship. Because right. there's oh, yeah. too many Typically games. Typically speaking, right? yeah. Yeah. the best team or one of the best three yeah. teams in the NBA almost always win the championship. Yeah. And so if the, if the Celtics are one of the best three teams by the end of the year in terms of how they're playing, they're not winning the championship. They're not even going to make the finals. Oh, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. And home court advantage is so important in the NBA, it's, it's sick. This, we showed, you know, last oh, the, the officiating alone. <clears throat> what we see in the NBA is the superstars win. Mm-hmm. The team, you know, it can a lot of things can happen during the season, and this is why these superstars are so coveted, That's because right. those are who end up playing at the end of the year are the superstars. Exactly. The team with the most superstars in the NBA typically wins. All right, so boys, the problem with the Celtics is. They need to quit shooting three pointers so much. Well, they got to stop being so lazy on offense. Sometimes <clears throat> they just come down one or two passes, heave Joe, it up. But if Joe, if you saw that's it, lazy. But yesterday's game, they worked the ball inside much yeah. more. Mm-hmm. They yeah. drove to the basket. Yeah. They didn't just heave up three pointers. Yeah. And look, they beat the Sixers in Philadelphia. Yeah. Why is that not the game plan moving forward, Joe? I I, I agree totally with you. That they, they should have been doing it all year. We've been you know yelling mean? for them. You know to what do the it. Lakers game reminded me of. You're playing two on two with your buddies, and you get tired. What do you do? You start shooting outside. That's right. You stop going to think because it's too too uh, too much exertion. That's what that Lakers game looked like to me. So maybe maybe they're going to break the mold a little Mm -hmm. bit, and they said, "Hey, we we got to take the ball inside." Well, here's the thing, though, and I've been as optimistic about this team as anyone. I'm not falling for it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not getting into the Celtics are back (laughs) narrative (laughs) until they've (laughs) strung together 15 games where they're winning games on the road and they're beating good teams at home. I don't want to listen to the Celtics have two good games in a row or beat six crappy teams in a row, and everyone is mm-hmm. you know shouting from the rooftops that the Celtics are back. They've it turned the corner, right? No, it's a great point. And the whole lack of toughness thing. Well, it'll return when Aaron Baines comes back. Don't put mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. whole season on the shoulders of Aaron right. Baines, right? Yeah. How about some other guys <laughs> acting a little? A tough? second string player at best. But, yeah, yeah, right. But Scott, I think Baines has. It is showing how important he is to this team. I know, but he is, again, he's a... a but the rest of them got to toughen up is what Scott is saying. He's a 15 to 20-minute guy, yeah. and he's not mm-hmm. going to be yeah. the reason but, you but win he, a championship. But he's an important cog in this team. I More important, I think, than a lot of us really thought. And that's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> right. We're depending on a backup. You know, all of you are right. We're depending yeah. on a backup center for toughness. He is tough, and, it, and we are better when he's in there, but we're depending on a backup center for toughness. Yes. Right, that, that's that, a bad. Thing. You know, it's shown. I think that the the superstars are soft. Our max players are soft. Our young guys are soft. Yep. And I'm starting to think our coach, coach is, a is soft. soft. He right? sure is. Well, that's a great segue, Professor, Ooh. to the next. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh. First of all, you know, I've been trying to trade Brad Stevens for a couple of years. <laughs> I've been trying to put him you in the package. You were real high. I think it'd be a nice package <laughs> in the uh, Anthony Davis deal. Well, mm-hmm. I've talked about Towns too, but has. Brad Stevens' value <laughs> dropped yeah, recently I because, I, I, to me, the most frustrating thing about Brad Stevens and what I'm swearing at the television set is the offensive call oh, a timeout, dif- lack of discipline offensively, where it seems like any guy on the court is allowed to heave up a three with 17 seconds mm-hmm. left on the you know 24 on the second ch- oh, clock, and he never sits them. That's what I mean about them getting lazy on offense, and he doesn't call a timeout and put a stop to it. Yeah, Timmy just said it. Call a timeout, settle everybody down, run a couple of plays, and snap back into it. Yeah. Right? Russ, can you remember one time in the Brad Stevens era that somebody took a bad (laughs) shot, and next thing you know, because he took a bad shot, he was on the bench. Well, look, I'm sure it's happened, and there have been reports that, you know, he he is actually tougher with some of his decisions in the background. But, look, when Marcus Morris feels the need to go out and, and really call the team soft, Right. He only needs to he only feels compelled to do that because no one else is doing that, including his coach. And by the way, Danny Ainge has has not said a bad word about this team all year long. Mm. Well, you know, the, here's the scary part about the, the uh, NBA right <clears throat> now. The management is walking on eggshells. Mm-hmm. These guys like great one, point too. one um, perceived slight. And they're buying a plane ticket out of town. You think, Timmy, that Morris has a cachet to be saying that? 
I do. I I think he's was truly one of well, the leaders he's on the team. Okay. So you stand out. I think they're scared of him. Yeah. I mean, no, those Morris brothers are not to but, be messed but with. But don't you think the way they went to jail? jail. Yeah. Don't, don't you think the way the NBA is it, the players call the shots? Where I'm going? What I'm doing? That's right. Don't. You know, if you're at a job, just take it. You know, for instance, and the boss gives you a hard time, and maybe rightfully so, maybe mm-hmm. you really screwed mm-hmm. up, but you might take it the wrong way. And then the guy across the street is offering you a job. You're like, I'm going over there. But the coaches need to be tough, too. I know. You right. would think that, but you're the, walking that fine but line. But the NBA is a player's league. It is. That's yes. the, they're they're mm-hing. unique to the force. N- nothing sport. more, but you know, epitomizes that than the current Kyrie's. Exactly. Can't yeah, play absolutely. for the That's Celtics, but... He can play for LeBron's team in the All-Star game. It, we we right. like to make sport-to-sport comparisons here. The entire NBA is full of Antonio Browns. Yeah, that's, that's oh, right. yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. The, the one guy, and we criticize the guy in the NFL. Here's the diva mm-hmm. wide receivers, and they're almost always wide receivers yeah. who were the yeah. divas. Mm-hmm. Those guys, that's the entire NBA or the entire top mm-hmm. class But in the, the NBA, NBA, they can walk. But the they NBA is not a team. It's that's individuals, right. and they've really stressed that the last few yeah. years. It's really individual play right now. It's yeah. the superstars yeah. who run the league. And they market yeah. it that way, Scotty. They yep, love 100%. the Twitter. They love the Snapchat and all this stuff. They love it. But my, Adam my Silver kids. lets LeBron run the league. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to do that, right? Well, hey. it keeps them in the news, and that's what Adam wants. Uh, wants revenues to. are up. Yeah. Okay, so even Tommy Heinsohn. It's great to have Tommy Heinsohn back. I love <laughs> yeah. him. Because yeah. I love Tommy uh, Heinsohn. I hope we have him I would legit I cry not to as a 53-year-old man. Who's only met him once? If he did, when he died, oh my! I yeah. really love. I went him. to school with his son Paul. He was a great guy. He, yeah, oh, that's good. He's yeah. a legend. I consider him the greatest Celtic of all time. What? When you consider the greatest Celtic, when you take oh, into account you mean coaching. playing, oh, right. Coach. coaching, yeah. broadcasting, yeah. Yeah. I consider him the Hall of Fame in all three. Careers. He was fun yeah. to watch coach. Oh, he oh was my God! Oh. He used to get oh. teed up all the time. <laughs> William the intern. Yeah, you would have. And liked then we had him. Johnny Most in the mix <laughs> too with oh. him and. So he called Grandpa Gordon Hayward. He didn't call him Grandpa, but I he thought he was. That would have just blown your head up <laughs> if he did, <laughs> yeah, right? right? He called him an anomaly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which when, it, when Tommy Heinsohn's calling you an anomaly, yeah. that means he doesn't don't really in. like you that much. Um, yeah. Tommy is very careful with his words. He's not been happy with uh, Hayward's consistency. Yeah. And what do you do moving forward? How many ch- time do you wait before <clears throat> he starts to see a little more of the bench? You, you know, I, I would say I would take five minutes from him and say you have to earn those five minutes. He should Back, play 20 right, minutes yeah. a night. Yeah. He's getting 26 every single night. And I would say play your way into those extra minutes. But if yeah. you're, you know, I was saying earlier, the thing about Hayward is you kind of know within his first appearance in a game, two, three, four minutes if he's got it that night. And if he doesn't have it, don't give him 26 minutes. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point. If he's yeah. not feeling it, he stops shooting and starts yeah. passing. And that's pretty obvious. His, you, you can see whether he has his confidence or he doesn't. He's a, he's a confidence guy. Mm, yeah. He has that 15-footer and he passes it up. Put him on the bench. He's yeah. not here. But I think part of the dissension, I'm, I'm not saying anything that anyone doesn't already know, is the, the managing of his minutes mm-hmm. uh, as in deference to the Jalen Browns of the world but, you ha- know, and mm-hmm. has not made the Celtics team a happy but, camp. But uh, by the same uh, token, he has... Token. Been much more selfless as a, and tried to fit in as a team player much more than say, Kyrie has. But I think that's right, Joe. Yeah, Kyrie is, is he's a, very yeah, different. Ky- Kyrie's to hell with these all. He's I'm annoying all of us. And let's be honest, Kyrie likes to take games off. You know, yeah. I mean quarters off, halves off. Well, look, but he likes to take over the game too. But I would yeah. assume that there's probably be. Kyrie's probably been out, what, seven, eight games oh. this season? Oh, oh more than yeah. that. Okay. Probably 12 games. <laughs> this is a guy that was hurt last year and didn't play yeah. the, well, if you consider the playoffs, second half of the season. Yeah. I don't know if didn't he really show up for the seventh game. I'm not completely sold. I don't know if you guys are and been giving Kyrie $40 million. Well, here's the year. problem to bring back Timmy's point, though. Team, you know, there, there. I don't think there has been a team in the NBA to win a championship that has not an M, had an MVP on it for like twelve or fifteen years. It mm. Might be go all the way back to the Pistons team. Teams with MVPs win titles. You know what it is? The playoffs. That's when those that's guys exactly right, really Tim. show up. Those that's you right. know, yeah. hustlers and grinders and this and that. Mm. When it comes to the playoffs, the superstars. That's when they separate themselves. But he still themselves. needs to prove it to me in the well, playoffs with the Boston well, he, Celtics. With the Boston yeah. Celtics, but he's yeah. proved it with Cleveland. Uh, so. I'm actually, I'm not even <coughs> arguing your point that much. My point is that it, it doesn't have to be Kyrie, but if it's not Kyrie, there needs to be somebody else who's an MVP caliber player. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so if Kyrie walks, yeah. Danny's 
It's got to be Anthony Davis. He's got well, or he's got to go find or another Towns. Guy. I'm Towns is a sleeper <laughs> guy. Okay, I'm just saying that. I don't put You're, Towns at that level though. Not yet. <clears throat> well, I love Towns. All right, and I love Kyrie. I mean, yeah, fun to watch. Watch on. Oh the my board. God, he's like it's like going Tripping. to the circus. Yeah, watching this guy That's play. Right. It'd be a nice booby price mm-hmm. if we don't get to Davis Towns. I'm just telling you. I think he and I think he'd really excel here too. All right, so we go to the Boston Red Sox. Maybe you heard they they are 2018 Woo! World Series yeah. champions. I'm never going to stop. And what day that. was today, Scotty? Pitches okay. and catches. First, yeah. first no, workout. right, exactly. Yes. First of all, I want to say Chris Sale got skinnier in the offseason. Yeah. <laughs> he said he put on weight. Oh no, God! You have to see a picture. Oh my God! He's one of the, he's the skinniest athlete I've ever seen. He's not on the Tim Holy Food sports. program. Uh, I tell Manupo you that. Manupo probably was this. <laughs> oh yeah, I think. Oh, we're yeah, yeah. Right, we're gonna have to get a Manupo <laughs> yeah. Chris Sale picture yeah. and Photoshop got Chris Sale's <laughs> yeah. head on him. Okay, so you know <clears throat> I've talked about Stephen Wright, and I just already mentioned you him love on the him. show. The Iron Man. The the <laughs> typical the prototype worst millennial athlete of all time. Yeah. He just wants to remind us all before spring oh, training starts. God. That How hurt if we is. could have music play mm-hmm. the smallest violin, mm-hmm. that Stephen Wright may never be a hundred percent again. Yeah. Oh, Scott, oh, for Scott, God's he, sake! He's an innings eater, Scott. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Someone, some, yeah, right. Those Cole five games in the last season, maybe be in the closer. Ah, oh, come on, oh, Stephen Wright. Yes, yeah. throw his name <clears> in there. Who does he have picture, picture, picture in, uh, Who does he? What's no. the over under, guys, in weeks, concluding right now? Uh, that Stephen Wright will be put on the uh, injured reserve. He'll be in, in the injured reserve by May. I would <laughs> yeah, right. You think right? he'll make it out of spring training? <laughs> Imagine <laughs> having his life in like two hundred grand just shows up in your checking account every week. Right? <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? I want the disabled mm-hmm. list to be forever known as the Stephen Wright list. Oh. Yeah. Imagine his checking account every two hundred grand. <laughs> two hundred grand. You know? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. So the difference between the 2013 World Series. And the World Series in 2018 is that we don't hate the current manager. Yeah, I know. I don't think we hated Farrell in 2013. I think we were we we totally respectful him. at that point in time. Well, we were saying that he's not a good manager, but he won a World Series. That's yeah, right. That got him a lot of leeway. It did. But Alex Cora is a damn good manager, and I feel very confident very moving forward. Did with anyone him. hear yeah. his interview today? No. He just he was so eloquent. Did he crush it. That's with, great. You know. It, it's the same book. We're just turning the page in the book. That you know, like let's not. I'm not forgetting last year. He said, "Of course, who wants to forget last year? We're just turning the page." But don't you feel like we have a superstar manager? He's well, he manages yeah. the the game. With Farrell, the game managed him. Now, uh, and I'm not. I'm not saying this to push back, but there's a little bit of a reality check. Is let's see how well we think he's managing when he's trying to move those bullpen parts around and he has and no close if, if that bullpen blows three games in a week and a half it's he's the first person we're going to look at well i just have a feeling that they're going to sign somebody that there's a lot of guys right now who are quality pitchers who are on the street and initials a ck and he's not a comedian oh no craig <laughs> yeah right, exactly mm-hmm. good that was a good mm-hmm. one joe, good one, joe. Um, yeah. craig kimber was not coming back to the i Red don't Sox. think he is no, either he's not. yeah i because he will sign that we've said before, he will sign a ten million dollar contract with, say, the Atlanta Braves, mm. as opposed to a ten million dollar one with the Red Sox, because he was offered seventeen yeah, million. Well, does stay. that still have to stick? That opening offer? Do we no, no, no. He rejected it. No, so, but okay. if he, let's just say they sign him. I, I heard something yesterday. I think Alex Spear wrote it that if the Red Sox were to sign him for sixteen million dollars, because of the taxes, would cost them twenty eight million dollars for one year for Craig Kimbrell. They're never. They ain't paying twenty eight no. million oh, dollars right. for a closer. No, they're not doing it. They'll sign three schlubs. Yeah, the realities of the money sometimes are different than they outwardly appear. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Travis Lakins, he's a reliever that you're going to hear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you only hear this stuff. Look, I was telling you guys about this guy named Xander Bogarts before anyone. Yeah. Travis Lakins may be the guy coming out of was he a Portland of spring dog? training? He was a sea dog. Are yes, you making your call on Travis Lakins? Travis Lakins will be on the starting uh, twenty-five man roster. Of wow! The- wow! Yes. Yeah, that's that's righty. What's that? Left He's uh, righty. Yeah. Hard thrower. Yeah, hard Breaking thrower. Nineties miles an hour. Got to be a power pitcher. Yeah, Dombrowski has said that you know he has high expectations for he, the like, Ryan Rogers of the world, the Matt Barnes, mm. but. Let's be honest. We've already seen these guys pitch. He needs a young guy yeah. who and comes in. In the playoffs in the World Series, do we use these guys? No. We brought in Porcello. We brought in yeah. Sale. We brought in Price. Yep. We didn't use those guys. So beyond the bullpen, what's your biggest concern about the year? Well, I think 
I, I'm telling you something. The biggest concern is going to be first base. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, that is a position where you need heavy production. It's first base. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it from Steve Pierce. I'm telling you, but you're not going to get it. Could from you get Mitch it combined Moreland. though? Could you get it? No, you're not. The two of those, them. those. Those, uh, you know, platoon platoons. Those never work as far as big numbers. They don't. We'll see. I'm telling you something. I'm not that when worried about it. Really? I'm not that worried. Well, about that. I'm, I'm worried. worried about, and that's I'm a, worried that's about a, second base. I'm yeah. worried about second base. Yeah. Still. I think you, second base. You Brock Holt cannot carry second base for a full year. My Nunez big worries. was horrible. Second Dustin Pedroia is already there. Close. The second I base. The, I think the close is going to be a big giant zit on the face of the Red Sox. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Well, we, we have a lot of high school kids. We have, just, we have a lot uh, of high school So they kids. know what I'm talking oh about then, God, right? Geez. I think it's just you. We've had the luxury of having some pretty good closes in here yeah. in the last. You're you know, right, Timmy. Six, seven years, Koji. and uh, yep. you know we get the lead, and they come in in the ninth inning. It's over. You know, kind of like the old Yankees. With Bobby Corvino. Dahlbeck is going to be the starting second baseman <laughs> for the Boston Red Sox by you May first. You are smoking crack Absolutely. if you think that Bobby <laughs> Dahlbeck, Dahlbeck will be the who's starting. like six foot three and has never played a game at second base. Bobby, That's, Bob, uh, Bobby Dahlbeck. First of all, and you guys <laughs> don't understand Minus consideration. First of all, you don't understand that the infield positions, because of the shifts, mm. have changed dramatically. Yeah. We've got Raphael Devers at times playing shortstop because of these shifts. The second base position has changed. You have to get a power guy in there. Mm. You've got to turn that double play. Man. No, but nobody... Teams have power guys at second base. Nobody so. comes. No, this is the Boston Red Sox. We're competing against the New York Yankees who have power uh, positions I, if you in every said, position. If you had said Chavis, I might have believed you. Yeah, I, I'll, but I'll Dahlbeck, buy, yeah. not a yeah. chance. All I want out of second base is big time defense. That's 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 no, all no, I'm I want. Oh, right want now, more. I don't know. We have a lot of offense. Would, I want a guy who makes spectacular plays. At would second. you agree? Our two main competitions are Houston Astros and the New York Yankees. Mm -hmm. Yes. The power numbers on these teams, you have to s compete against these well, offenses. We have it in other places. What do you want? In defense? Oh, for God. Yeah. Well, what? For the drag bunts that never yeah. happened? Yeah. Oh, my God. We want offense. Jeez. Okay. You know we love Mobamba. <laughs> we love Mobamba. And I would like the Celtics to, to you have just Mobamba. Love the name. I'd like the Mobamba to even be a relief pitcher for the Red Sox. I just want to say Mobamba. Have you heard? Have you heard? Oh, Mobamba. The basketball player? Yeah. yeah. But I wanna i I'm gonna say though Winston Hernandez because that is literally my favorite yeah. name. If I had another child I, and it was a boy in actual fact even if it was a girl, I would call I'm, her Dar Winston. I'm gonna digress. Has anyone here heard Mo Bamba interviewed? No. He sounds like a Harvard professor. Oh, is, is that, that right? right? It is yeah. unbelievable <laughs> how articulate <laughs> this guy is. You're looking at he's like a seven foot tall guy. He looks like he's right off the boat from another continent and he speaks. He sounds like a Harvard professor. See, that's why I even like him even more. Incredibly yeah. intelligent guy. And Rick Porcello. See, I got a lot of predictions for the Red Sox. Oh, yeah. Rick Porcello will be traded by the end of spring training. It's so a you must. might you. So you're going to take that contract. But it's though. a must. Well, it's a one-year deal, Joe. Uh, he uh, uh, like a St. Louis no. Cardinals would take him. No. You don't believe? Yeah, hey, you've Chief. made three. <clears throat> so let's just recount your predictions. Mm -hmm. Travis Lincolns will be on <laughs> the 25-minute roster. Camp. Bobby Dahlbeck will be the starting second baseman. Or, or by Michael May. Chavis. Yeah, okay. I'll give you that. Okay, yeah. And Rick Porcello is going to be traded. He's going to be traded. During during spring, spring. Okay, spring good. No, this oh, yeah, is good. Know. We have something to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> All right, before I go, we're going to get that hat back. <laughs> New rule changes. Possible. No. DH in both leagues. You guys agree? I want Absolutely. it. What? I want it. Yeah. Yes. Three batter minimum. This is the, the this one is that's insane the, the most interesting. Three batter minimum. Oh, no, it gets for, rid of that loogie for each position. pitcher. Makes me crazy. You don't like that? You bring a guy in, he gets lit up. You got to wait until he's get. He, he gives get up, lit up. He, he gives get, up a home run. He, he comes in with guy with two guys on. He gives mm -hmm. up a home run to the first batter, and he gives up a home run to the second batter. Yeah. All right, well, how many times? Yeah. Fernando or Bad gives up a home run to the lefty. It, it, it could happen face plenty of times <laughs> without bullpen. <laughs> maybe just, maybe just have that during the regular season. That's silly. That's just like a silly. P put the pitch clock on. Can how we about, just keep these but how about only on? three pitches to an inning then? This is dumb. You know what? Put the pitch clock on him. Uh, hold a reliever coming in. To He's got three pitches. So warm up in the bullpen. You get three pitches. You got a 20-second clock. Yeah. Let's get the game moving. I agree. I would have mentioned this earlier if I knew it was going to be crazy. the last oh, yeah, you That's struck a, a nerve. fundamental change Something in the game. Something has to be done, man. That's it a is fundamental change. How many four-hour games did we sit through last year? No, I believe It was you. agony. And, and I, I can just, remember in the 60s, 70s, it was a two-hour game. You could almost yeah. set your clock we're by We're diehard Red Sox fans, and we were, like, losing our minds mm -hmm. in the middle of these Throw games. the freaking baseball. 
Yeah. yeah. Right? That's what they need to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm just so glad it's spring training. I'm just so glad that soon it's going to be the Boston Red Sox, right? Yes. You are very oh, excited. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And with, with the Super Bowl on top of it going into it. You know? it's, the cherry it's my favorite top. season. And right? they're the defending champions, too. The best thing about baseball is it's a six-month soap opera. Right, mm-hmm. and that's the best part of it compared every to all day. of it. Every I day. want to thank the boys. That's our show for tonight. I want to thank William, the intern, who handled everything tonight. Woo! Went so hard tonight, tonight, William, God. the He's intern. A star. Please check us out on our website at thegrandstanders.com and tune in on Friday night mm-hmm. on Dirty Water Live, coming to you from the greatest bar in Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Scott Kerman. Have a great and happy night. The elephants are in town. (laughs) Here comes the circus.